Hey there, welcome back to SimTech channel in this series of tutorial on the basics of Dick Silent Power Factory. In the previous tutorial, we talked about the voltage dependency loads, basically where different type of loads are affected by the voltage level on the bus bar. Voltage regulation on the bus bar is very crucial because different type of loads are affected differently when the voltage level drop below a certain point. Now in this tutorial, we're going to talk about another way where the voltage on the bus bar is regulated. That is by using a device known as a tap changer on a transformer. Now what exactly is a tap changer? A tap changer is basically a device that is mounted on a transformer, which basically a transformer itself is a crucial uh, element in a power system network where we've got this T1 here, which has only one duty here to basically take the power from the grid on the primary and transfer it on the secondary where we've got all these type of loads connected. So the transformer tried to do it in a most efficient way, trying to achieve maximum power transfer. That's all it's tried to do, okay? But the transformer is not in control of what's going on on the grid side. So the grid might fluctuate. This per unit voltage, the line voltage, right might go either up or down okay depending the transformer will also just pass it on it will pass it through and when it passes it through basically the loads attached on the secondary of the transformer they will either be negatively or positively affected depending on the type of load that is connected but now some clever guys they went and decided that well we need to find a way to mitigate that circumstances we do not want that situation to keep on arising where there is disturbance on the grid and the loads are actually being affected right now these are only minor disturbances okay so if the grid goes down obviously your loads are going to be deprived from power okay you need some external power source but if there are slight disturbances in on the grid you need to be able to have intelligent uh, devices that can be able to actually cope with that. So this is where we're talking about tap changes in a transformer. So it's basically a device that is mounted on a transformer, which basically only have one duty, okay? And that duty is to basically regulate the voltage levels while the transformer is under load. That is why they are commonly known as on load tap changer or OLTC. Basically, it will be doing the changing while the transformer is online. Okay. Now you can also have offload or no load tap changer where basically there is nothing connected to it. Now, in that case, if it was this transformer that I needed to basically change the tapping position while it is connected on this network, I will then disconnect. I will first disconnect this network using disconnectors devices, right? change the tapping position and reconnect the circuit again to power the load but now you'll understand that that is not ideal in terms of power system that seek to uh, basically maintain continuity of supply so this is why the intelligent guys they came in and decided on this on load tap changes devices where you don't have to interrupt your 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 network here the flow can continue and we are going to intelligently just change the tapping position, right? So that's basically how it regulates. It change the tap position of the transformer. So now, as you can see right now here, this tap changer is connected onto the three phase of the transformer. That way, if it want to regulate uh, one of the phase, it will then basically just move into a tapping position to actually alter the turn ratio of the particular phase, right? And then affect the desired change on the output of that uh, transformer, right? So that basically what the tap changer is basically doing, it will just ensure that it keep a stable output voltage on the bus bar. That way it will ensure regulation. Now, without going into too much detail about the tap changer, that will be a subject of another tutorial now, there are all sorts of type of tap changers, right? The mechanical one is the most common one. We also have electronics tap changer where it will use power electronics control to basically smoothly move into different tapping position without having a major 
disruption onto the the passport while it actually try to affect that circulation now by the way if you find this tutorial useful please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel that will be highly appreciated i thank you so very much for your support great now we start making this tutorial about the theory of tape changer functionality let's go in a practical way how we can actually see how tape changer can be used in the circuit here to regulate the bus bar here now right now based on the previous tutorial about voltage dependency load we can see that the bus bar here the voltage the per unit voltage is sitting at 0.94 per unit while the grid here is supplying a one per unit volt okay now the drop on the bus bar voltage is dependent on several factors which is transformer loadings and all sort of stuff now the loads connected onto this bus bar will then suffer the consequences depending on the type of loads they are so if we want to avoid this situation i'm repeating myself here we then need to achieve a certain voltage regulation now let's go ahead and see how we can do it with depth changer so i'm going to double click on this transformer here okay now before i do that let me just uh put these loads out of service so that we can actually just deal with one type of load in this tutorial here so i'm going to put a constant current load and a constant power load out of service that way we only going to be dealing with one load now if i run this simulation one more time now we can see that after removing the constant current and the constant power load we can see that the voltage on the bus bar basically just recovered slightly to 0.98 per unit which is quite very close to the one per unit that the grid is supplying but this is could still be a problem for some of the loads here now how do we mitigate this with the tap changer so i'm going to stop this now and double click onto the transformer then we're going to go into the type of transformer right and load flow then we're gonna go on to tap change a tab here now if you are a technician or an engineer you need to affect some change on the tap position right this information will basically be provided to you or they will be on the nameplate of the transformer or the tap changer itself so this additional voltage per tap is a small fraction of the transformer voltage on the secondary so it cannot be big because as you move into different ratio into different uh, turn ratio right so there must be either a, a, an increase or a decrease in the voltage to provide regulation and that increase or decrease is a very small portion so it can never be very major otherwise you're changing your whole transformer behavior let's assume that this value is 1.5 percent and we also need to provide a minimum value we're going to give it a negative 12 and the maximum value will be a positive 12 right of your tapping position then we're going to say okay and move to the load flow now on the load flow here we can see that we've got the minus 12 and the 12 and we've got the 1.5 percent of additional voltage per tap now we need to click on the controller so to do that we need to click on automatic tap changing right once you click you're going to see this option basically are going to show up here now this is very crucial option now the reason being here remember you're trying to regulate your secondary where your loads are connected okay because your primary is your grid you got no control of it you want to regulate where the power is going to okay so to do that you need to select your regulation area here so the control node is at low voltage side but now what are you controlling on the low voltage side are you controlling the voltage the power or the reactive power we are controlling the voltage so we want to leave it at voltage because if we change it at p obviously the parameters are going to be changing here to the power that we want now we want to control the voltage now comes the important parameter the set point what do you want to control to we want to maintain a one volt per unit as we've seen here when we were running the load flow on the voltage dependency the voltage drop the per unit drop at 0.94 but we want to ensure that it's always at one per unit no matter what 
remember this will be minor regulation not major if you need to do a major regulation that basically mean your network is not working you need to start disconnecting loads we need one per unit and the lower bound we're going to leave it at 0.99 per unit and the upper bound will be 1.01 per unit so this is basically where we want to be in terms of our regulation if things don't go according to what we want but ideally we want to remain at one per unit basically if we go lower than one per unit we want to be at 0 0.99 per unit if we go higher we want to be at 1.01 per unit that basically the window in which we want the regulation on our feeder bus bar to maintain okay so that basically all we need here we can go ahead and click okay great now if we run the simulation here again the load flow we should be able to see a one volt per unit or either a 99 or a 1.01 depending on where the iteration is going to take us now let's go ahead and execute the load flow here and i need to basically untick the consider load dependency right because that was for the previous tutorial and we need to enable the automatic tap adjust of transformers and let's go ahead and execute okay as you can see the load flow analysis is executing as we've got a one per unit here we also now have one volt per unit on the bus bar here on the feeder bus bar now if we stop this right if we stop this and execute it again by uh deselecting the automatic tapper just here execute again you're going to see that the voltage is going to drop to zero 0.98 per unit because we are not considering the tap position of the transformer we are not doing the automatic tap changing the onload tap changer is not having any effect here now we need to enable it then we're going to have an effect now what i'm going to do here is basically to click on my grid here go on load flow and i'm going to change the per unit voltage here okay i'm going to set it to 1.1 okay now if i change the grid voltage okay now when i run this again without selecting the automatic tap adjust okay we're going to see that the voltage here is at 1.09 now this is a problem as you can see my load bus by here is on the red zone okay now if i run this now again and this time around select the automatic tap adjust okay and execute we're going to now have the tap changer in effect as you can see now we are on the upper bound okay so we got 1.01 per unit so our bus bar is being regulated despite what is going on on the grid right there now as you busy testing these uh tap changes on your network you can actually add in multiple scenario here so let's go ahead uh let's stop this flow and then we need to save the operation scenario so we're going to say this as the uh 1.1 per unit right so this is basically the grid voltage okay so this is grid grid voltage right so grid voltage 1.1 per unit and we're going to add another scenario here and we're going to put a worst case scenario here so i'm going to say grid voltage of 0 0.7 per unit now let's see what the system is going to react here now this basically mean you can choose what you want to activate here based on the scenario but obviously let's activate the 0 0.7 first okay once we activate it i'm going to go ahead and change uh the parameter of my grid here and i'm going to set it to 0 0.7 per unit great now before i run this i want to also just basically visualize my tap changer here so we're going to go to the layers tap position and we're going to put it to visible and okay now we can see the tap position right 
Now let's go ahead and run this on the 0 0.7 per unit and see how the regulation is going to be ensured in this scenario here. So let's run the load flow. Right, so you can see that we are on the 0 0.7 period, which is really a worst case scenario. Because if your grid voltage dropped from 1 per unit, right, to 0 0.7 per unit, that is too much drop, right? You basically have got problem. Now, if you want to compensate this, you basically need to uh, increase your tapping position here. Let's just stop this right you need to increase your your tapping uh, additional voltage basically the percentage in which you basically going to be changing and change this number to let's say 3.5 percent and then let's go ahead and try and let's see uh where our network is actually standing with this new change right you see once you increase the percentage of your tapping point you can see that the regulation have been restored because now you've got such a massive drop on your system okay now this is definitely not ideal because you want very small change on your regulation you get basically the point of how these step changes operate so this is basically it for this tutorial if you find it useful please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to simtech channel that would be highly appreciated until next time cheers